I am Dr. Fasil Taha, Neurology Specialist working in Universal Hospital Abu Dhabi. Today we will learn few facts about epilepsy. Recollect having witnessed a person having a severe attack, falling to ground, losing consciousness with his hands or legs continuously shaking or twitching uncontrollably, drooling of froth from mouth or even losing his bladder control. Within minutes of the attack, the person regains his consciousness but is exhausted and dazed. This is the image most people have when they hear the word epilepsy. This strange behavior caused by some disturbance in brain has contributed through the ages to many superstitions and prejudices. The word epilepsy was derived from the Greek word attack. Now what is epilepsy? Epilepsy is a brain disorder in which brain cells or neurons sometimes signal abnormally. Many believe that having a seizure equates to having epilepsy. Although the two terms are often used simultaneously, a seizure is a single disorder of electrical discharge in the brain causing alteration in behavior, sensation or consciousness, whereas epilepsy is defined as two or more unprovoked seizures. Seizures are fundamental elements of epilepsy, but not all seizures are manifestations of epilepsy. Epilepsy is more common during early childhood and after the age of 60. What are the causes of epilepsy? Epilepsy may develop because of imbalance of nerve signaling chemicals called neurotransmitters. In 50% of people, the cause of epilepsy may be unknown. When there is a cause that can be found, it can be head injury, genetic factors, diseases such as infections of brain or stroke. Peri prenatal injury. Some babies are sensitive to brain damage that can be caused by factors such as infections in mother or oxygen deficiencies during pregnancy. Now, who is likely to develop epilepsy? Some things make seizure more likely for some people with epilepsy. These are referred to as triggers. For example, stress, insufficient sleep, drinking excess alcohol, missing anti-epileptic medication, meals and exposure to light that flash or flicker. Certain factors may increase your risk of epilepsy such as age, more common during early childhood or after the age of 60. If you have a family member suffering from epilepsy, brain infections and past history of head injury. Now what are the symptoms of epilepsy? Symptoms may vary from person to person. Some people may have simple staring spells while some have violent shaking and loss of consciousness. Some people with epilepsy will have strange sensations such as tingling, smelling and order that isn't actually there or emotional change before each seizure and these are called auras. Commonly, epilepsy presents as intermittent fainting episodes and frequently followed by extreme tiredness and unresponsiveness. Sudden bouts of blinking, repetitive movements that seem inappropriate in adults, arms, legs or body parts, in babies appearing as cluster of rapid jerking movements, drooling of frothing from mouth, loss of bladder or bowel control, teeth clenching, tongue biting and so on. The person may have warning symptom before the attack which may include fear or anxiety, nausea, visual symptoms such as flashing of lights, spots or wavy lines before the eyes. What are the different types of epilepsy? Seizures are broadly classified as focal or generalized. Generalized seizure begins everywhere in the brain at once while focal seizure begin in one region of brain. In generalized seizures, most often the patient lose consciousness, although it can be very brief as to go unnoticed. The muscles in the body may stiffen or jerk. In focal or otherwise known as partial seizures, abnormal activity occurs in any one part of the brain. However, consciousness is not usually impaired. Patients may experience unusual feelings or sensations or may have inability to speak. How is epilepsy diagnosed? The most important way is by eliciting the history of the event. Since people who suffered an attack do not remember what happened, caregivers' accounts of the seizure are vital to this evaluation. Various tests are used to determine if the patient has epilepsy and if so, what kind of seizure that person has. These include EEG or electroencephalogram, brain scans and blood tests. EEG records the brain waves detected by electrodes placed on the scalp and can detect abnormalities in the brain's electrical activity. Brain scans like CT and MRI scans reveal the structure of brain which is useful for detecting tumors and other structural abnormalities. Blood samples are screened for metabolic or genetic disorders that may be associated with seizure. How can epilepsy be treated? Accurate diagnosis of the type of epilepsy a person has is crucial for finding an effective treatment. 
Medicines can help to manage the epileptic attack by stopping or reducing the number of frequency of attacks. While choosing medications, various factors like the type of seizure, age and associated conditions have to be considered. Now what to do during epilepsy attack? It is important that people who work or live with you know the correct way to handle a seizure in case they are with you when you have one. The main goal is to protect the person from injury. Whenever there is an attack of epilepsy, try to prevent a fall. Lay the person on the ground in a safe area. Clear the area of furniture or other sharp objects. Cushion the person's head, loosen tight clothing, especially around the neck, and turn the person on his or her side. This helps to prevent aspiration of food to the lungs if vomiting occurs. Stay with the person till he or she recovers or till professional medical help is available. Don't try to put your fingers in the person's mouth. Do not force anything between the teeth. Don't try to restrain someone having a seizure. Do not move the person while the seizure is in progress unless the person is in immediate danger. Do not try to give anything by mouth until the convulsions are stopped and the person is fully conscious. Now, what are the complications of having a seizure? Although most people with epilepsy can lead a full and active life, they are at risk of complications. Having a seizure at certain times leads to certain circumstances that are dangerous to yourself or others. If you fall during a seizure, you can injure your head or break a bone. Similarly, a seizure during driving can cause a car accident. If you love swimming, be more careful as you are more likely to drown if you get a seizure during swimming or bathing. Since epilepsy affects the quality of life, you are more prone to develop psychological problems, especially depression and anxiety. If you are planning to conceive, remember that certain anti-epileptic medications increase the risk of birth defects. Though most women with epilepsy can become pregnant and have a healthy baby, it is advisable to discuss it with your doctor before you plan your pregnancy. Now, living with epilepsy, one of the biggest concerns for people with epilepsy is how it affects everyday life. Most people with epilepsy lead outwardly normal lives. Approximately 80% can be significantly helped by modern therapies. Tell the people close to you like your friends, relatives or teachers about your epilepsy and teach them what to do in case you have a seizure when they are with you. Finally, here are some tips for living with epilepsy. Make sure you get at least 8 hours of sleep every day because lack of sleep is known to trigger epilepsy. Take your anti-epileptic medicines at a regular time every day as specified by your doctor. Eat proper balanced meals and drink at least 6 to 8 glasses of water per day to maintain hydration. If you go swimming, take someone with you who know that, what, who know that you have seizures and who know what to do if you have a seizure in water. Do not work on the computer for too long at a stretch and take adequate breaks. Too much television viewing is also dangerous because certain patterns of lights are known to trigger epilepsy. Do not take or stop any medicines without your doctor's advice. Try avoid driving alone as far as possible. You can live a normal life with epilepsy and do what everyone else does, provided you take all possible precautions to keep yourself as safe as possible. Thank you. Thank you.